We are back now with a story that caught our eye about Vincent Van Gogh's famous Starry Night painting. Here's a look at that painting. I'm sure you recognize it. He painted it in 1889, but it is now one of the most recognizable works of art in the world. Known for its iconic swirly skies that are thought to reflect Van Gogh's stormy state of mind when he painted it. But new research finds that these famous swirls actually match up with our current models of atmospheric turbulence. And scientists think the troubled artist may have had a deeper understanding of these movements by studying the clouds and atmosphere. If that all went over your head, don't panic. I'm right there with you. And luckily, we are joined by astrophysicist Adam Frank to help us understand it all. Adam, thank you so much for being here. So first of all, let's just back up and explain these findings to me like I'm a five-year-old. What are we talking about? when we say atmospheric turbulence? Well, really, let's start with turbulence itself. So turbulence is this fluid motion, fluids is like gases or liquids, that we're all very familiar because we've all seen boiling water, right? Um, fluid uh, Turbulence is any time in a fluid where it's there's enough activity that you get those roiling, tumbling motions, you get big swirls, and then you get little swirls, and they're all happening at the same time. And the amazing thing about turbulence, whether it's happening in a, in a, you know, a pot of water or on the surface of the sun or in an interstellar cloud or in the atmosphere of the, um, the Earth, it's all the same. It all behaves the same. And as much as it might look like chaos, there's actually these beautiful, deep uh, relationships, uh, physical relationships about energy and momentum that happen in any turbulent flow uh, that it seems like that Van Gogh, you know, intuitively may have sort of understood by watching clouds, etc. Hmm. So it is not only the shape in this painting that's similar, right? But it's also the brush strokes and the colors. I mean, does that surprise you? Are these patterns things that you could typically see with the naked eye? Well, here's the thing that really is amazing to me about this. And you, this is like a deep geek dive. Oh, yeah, it's give it to us, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mathematics behind the pattern, the mathematical pattern that when you look at turbulence, which just looks like a mess, when you cast it as a scientist and you take data and you examine the data in very abstract ways, you suddenly see that this isn't complex, it's very simple. For example, how many big swirls, you know, in the turbulence there are, compared to how many little swirls there are, there's actually a very precise mathematical law that tells you that. And what it seems like is that when um, uh, Van Gogh was painting those brush strokes, the number of big brush strokes to the number of little brush strokes follows the same pattern. So it's almost like he was he was engaging with that mathematical law without knowing anything about the mathematics. He'd watched the world, watched water flowing over a, you know, a waterfall or water boiling or clouds in the sky, and he kind of intuited what was happening there. You know, there are some people who will say, oh, Van Gogh's style, it's fluid. He uses short brush strokes in a lot of his works. This is all just a coincidence. Do you think it is more than that? I mean, it seems like you really think he was understanding something, even if maybe he couldn't articulate it in the way that we would today. I think, you know, art has the capacity to capture truth just like science does. Often those are different truths. Like, you know, you look at Shakespeare and the, you know, the emotional understanding that he had about leadership, for example. You know, that's not something science is really going to get. But also sometimes art can capture physical truths that also are expressible in science. You know, um, da Vinci did lots of drawings of turbulent flows, of waterfalls, trying to capture, he was trying to see what really was happening there. So I think that, I don't think this is a coincidence. I think that uh, Van Gogh was responding intuitively, emotionally to what he was seeing in the sky and was therefore sort of recapturing those patterns that then a detailed mathematical analysis would also find. Talk to us about where the math and science was at the time he was painting this, 1889. I mean, were there people in academic spaces in the math and science understanding or starting to understand some of these more complex theories of physics and atmospheric dynamics? Or was he really kind of just out there on his own in some ways? He was out there on his own. Mm -hmm. Fluid dynamics, you know, had been around for a while, but it didn't, you know, it was still, we were still very early stage in the late 1880s in terms of the kinds of things that would eventually we'd come to understand 
uh, about turbulence. Like there's this thing called the Kumalogorov spectrum. <laughs> you know, there's your buzzword for the day. That, you know, that would have to wait until the 40s, really. So again, I don't think he was like, getting the mathematics it wasn't like he was you know could write down the mathematics it was that he was a he was a human being in the world responding to the world's beauty you know the 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 detail the the um the the the, the response to the motions that he saw in the sky and was capturing a sense of what would mathematicians would later on capture in mathematics, because you know the mathematics, it's beautiful to me, right? Any mathematician, the, the, it, it captures in a different language. Like what he was doing was capturing in the language of painting what would later be captured in the very beautiful language of mathematics. Wow! All right, astrophysicist Adam Frank, thank you so much for being with us tonight and helping us to understand a little more about the universe. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.